Howdy and welcome to Lee Reads where I talk about the books I've been reading and enjoying lately. Welcome to a relaxed non-spoiler reading vlog. I am going to be finally reading Curse of the Chalion by Lewis McMaster Bouldrilled. I've had this one sitting on my shelf for a long time and recently I've been seeing it mentioned a lot on our cozy fantasy as a somewhat cozy read despite what the cover would suggest. It's a very action forward cover in my opinion. I also recently featured this book in my exploding TBR where I have a goal of finally reading some of the novels that have been sitting on my shelf for quite some time by the end of May. The premise of this novel, as I understand it, is that a disgraced page is returning back to the household that he used to serve after kind of lo losing everything in this war. And then he winds up having to train or somehow guard or take care of one of the daughters of the house. And the cover tells me I feel like they're going to be flying from danger or charging into danger. I'm not sure, but I've seen very positive reviews and recommendations of this novel floating around and it's high time that I finally give it a go. So I'll be checking in as I read it over the next couple of days. And as I discover the novel, I will let you know more of my thoughts. So I hope that this is going to be a winner. First check in. And I realized as I started reading it this, that this copy is actually a first edition, which is pretty fun. I've only gotten a few chapters in by this point, but it's deep enough for me to really like the main character. He's a middle-aged man who used to be a page for this house. And then when these wars started, he was a captain, a commander, a courier, all sorts of different roles that didn't have a wonderful outcome for him because when the wars were over, his status as a minor noble was somehow forgotten and he was sold off amongst the other losers of this war and wound up becoming a slave to these corsairs on the sea. Is coming back now with quite a bit of trauma that is evident on the page and I think it's going to be really great to see him kind of overcoming these new anxieties. What I find really endearing about him is that he is like overwhelmed with gratitude at a lot of simple things. I mean, this was this man in his past was a minor noble and now he's just happy if someone gives him slightly nicer cast off clothing. So he's found his way back to the house he used to serve because he really has nowhere else to go. There's a religious order and there's some magic in this world. So far we've encountered a death magic right at the very beginning that I feel is going to impact the plot moving forward. So he's returned to this house and he has a lot of really great firsthand experiences. He has a lot of education. The the elderly woman who now is in charge of this, this castle that he's returned to, Chalion, thinks that his history and experiences can be put to good use. And she has just made him the secretary tutor to her granddaughter who will one day hold very high rank. And so she wants him to give her some first world knowledge basically because she can be a little bit naive and innocent. So he has just started tutoring the granddaughter and the daughter of the castle warder. There are definitely foundations happening for plot to come. So I don't think that this is going to be quite as cozy as something like Legends and Lattes. This is going to have, I think, some pretty good action starting, but it's just really taking its time to get developed. I'm already feeling fairly attached to our main character, and I like what we're seeing from some of the other primary characters like the granddaughter and the warder's daughter that he is now starting to really interact with, and he's going to probably get caught up in some scheming. All right, one last update today before I go to bed. I'm about halfway through the novel now and while I wouldn't say that it's full of political intrigue the fabric of the story is very much centered kind of around Tazaril being part of the household to this heiress and eventually that household gets involved in courtly life and politics so those sorts of threads start 
winding their way into the story, but it's still very much a character-focused story. Kazaril, as some things in his past are impacting what's going on in the present, but he's taking this knowledge and experience and trying to guide these young women that he is responsible for and supposed to, and supposed to be you know protecting as they are entering into a much more vulnerable setting i'm really enjoying it and there's something about the way that sh that the author writes that's just humorous it's funny there's like a nice dry wit included in there which i also found to be true in the verkosican saga so far I'm just a, I'm just a fan of Luke McMaster Buljo's writing style. It's very clean and efficient, and yet it's still quite evocative, and you can perfectly understand what that character is thinking, even if they're saying something that's the opposite, because you just you can really kind of hear the tone in their voice or in their thoughts but it's not overwritten and I'm just really enjoying it. I'm having a good time reading the story so far. Things are building and I trust this author and I'm just having a good time. And I just wanna see where he winds up uh, trying to keep his headstrong and intelligent and kind of naive charges in order. Real quick update, I was only able to read a little bit at lunch today, but I am at the true halfway point now and all of the pieces that I have sensed that she has been building up and here comes the kitten here she is <laughs> all of the pieces that i've sensed that she's been building up have fallen into place and now the scales are starting to tip over into like stuff's really starting to hit the fan watching how the characters have started reacting to it trying to be proactive to some things the dedication that they've built up between each other and the, the determination to help each other i find it really endearing and now because of some stuff that just happened when my lunch break ended and it came time to get back to work i didn't want to put it down i wanted to know what happened next it's it's all starting to hit the fan now for a cozy very intimate stakes book that means that you know things are very personal to the characters that the characters are imperiled everything is so cursed uh but i'm just riveted yeah everything is so cursed these poor characters i finished last night i have to say i think that casserole is now one of my top favorite characters in general and it's often said with Lewis McMaster Buljol that the characters are what truly are making the story and I wholeheartedly agree with that for Curse of the Chalion. The characters, especially let's just say our main group of characters, there's Kazrael, Azel and Patrice are the people that he's kind of guiding and counseling and trying to protect what I really enjoy is that all the characters are competent, even though they may lack some experience. They're still doing the best that they can. It's just that the things that are arrayed against them make things very challenging. They don't have all the power in the situation, and so they're really fighting uphill battles, but it's not frustrating to watch them do it. I just really, really liked being with these characters. Also, there is a bit of magic in this world. It isn't framed like magic. It's actually manifestations of the religion. And so the religion is very tightly woven into the story and how the characters behave, but it's not overwritten and doesn't take too prominent of a place in the story. Whereas like the effects that you see really kind of feel like magic in the world. But not everyone has it, it's just effects from the, the deities, so to speak. And I like how that was interwoven with the overall, like, the curse of the Chalion. Anyway, I really, really like this one. I'm a little upset with myself that it took me two years to finally read it. Kazarel is a new favorite character, and I think that this novel in itself is going to rank very high going forward in, in my favorite books. It's a standalone adult fantasy. It does have somewhat cozy vibes, but I think it's tr it's not 
truly cozy. It's just that it has personal intimate stakes. And even though there are farther reaching complications, it's not this grand story about mass scales of good versus evil. It's really about the people, and I really like that sort of story. It's set in somewhat of a medieval style world where essentially these city nations are led by their own royalty and the alliances are very important between them. Their religion, the, their temples play an impact in the politics. And yeah, it's just a very intricate world. I think it's very well realized and I especially enjoyed the characters. If you're looking for a really top-notch standalone fantasy, I urge you to please read Curse of the Chalion. As far as Louis Smithmaster Bujold, she's written other fantasy, she's written other science fiction, notably the Vorkosika Saga, which I've started. She has other fantasy series as well, so I, she's an author that's very worth exploring. Whether you like science fiction or fantasy, definitely check her out. I don't think that you'll be disappointed unless you just don't groove with her writing style, but I, I particularly just, I really like it. So I'm so glad that I finally read this novel and I hope that you will too. Let me know what you thought. And as always, don't forget to support your local library. Thanks.